Hey. 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 Hey, Glenn. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. It's, uh, what's, uh, what's going on? We're, we're, we're just, uh, it's been a long time, so you know, we decided. That was the last time you called, do you remember? <laughs> that was, uh. Le- last time we called, we got that, uh, that voice message. Yeah. That was like uh, a month ago, right? Which one yeah. was that? The one about the sellers busy in Ottawa? Yeah. yeah. Leaf to appeal? Yeah. 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 Leaf to appeal. That's how you make fruit. That's how you make fruit. Yeah. You go from the leaf to the peel. Oh. <laughs> the exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. To get there, you have to go by, by a guy who wears a wig because he calls himself Twig. <laughs> and number two is number one, so you got to start the word at the second letter, so that's a wig. Who wears wigs in a court of appeal? <laughs> that's mm, your judge. In England, don't don't the, uh, the judges and also the, um, the prosecutors everybody well? involved with with the judicial system in England is relatively supposed to. I don't know if they still all do, but supposed to wear wigs because they're the in between that takes the power that was received from the sun and moved down a leaf called Ericsson. Leaf Mm -hmm. Ericsson then passes it on to a twig, which came from an ark, therefore called the bark. The big wigs. Big wigs. Yeah, you got it. So anyways, we uh, we are moving on. <laughs> moving on with the assistance of uh, Thomas Byberg. Thomas Byberg. What's that? Oh, oh. Tom? You know Tom? Yeah. Um, so uh, how did that investigation go? They uh, discovered that Tom Byberg wants a cocker sent by the Byberg Company of Toronto belonging to his dad and brothers sent him to do a job at Tunney's Pasture, which has different government departments in a kind of a um, setting around a center square. I guess it used to be a farmer's field, and they built buildings all around near the Ottawa River, uh, near the parkway, and government departments moved in, and Tom was sent to do a job of caulking. I guess they had supposedly reported uh, leaky windows, and these buildings are medium high-rise buildings. I don't know exactly how many stories, but I'd say probably less than 30 and more than 20, somewhere in that range. Okay. I'm told that a uh, report was made on Tom Byberg uh, following, at, at a period following him doing a job on on windows there. 
And as part of the, the um, task he was paid to carry out, he did something different. He opened a window from the outside by undoing the caulking. Now, these are guys that hang off of ropes that hang from the rooftop and right. windows or wash windows, that type of stuff. Went inside a government office and obtained a thing unspoken of, but of great value. And shortly thereafter, uh, his family company bought him out. And Tom left, I think, with his first child, his son, and, and wife, second wife, I think, uh, on a journey that took them to England and Wales and into Europe and Greece and Syria and eventually ended up in Jordan where he met with the king of Jordan at that time and passed on this valuable property. Now, in, in trying to figure out what that might be, because the cell can't tell me when there's a crime that has occurred, can't give me the details till it goes to court, I suspect that what it was was either a gem or a coin or both, which would have confirmed to the King of Jordan that the task assigned to someone they knew had in fact been completed. As part of the um, signature, uh, there always is in those cases meaning to who did it and for what reason. Usually in those cases, they will refer to uh, remote control. Basically, he is African by origin and linked to the word poppy. CBC have an announcer in the middle of the night whose name yeah, is Poppy. CNN have a woman who does some reporting whose name is Poppy. And of course, if you're in Canada, you know that a Poppy is, in fact, a symbol of remembrance, which is... Uh, given away by former military people to raise money to help uh, you know, families that are distraught because their husbands were shot or killed or whatever during a war. Uh, I started examining the poppy. Uh, do you guys have you guys ever seen poppies for Remembrance Day? Yeah, I've seen. Um, I think pictures. I've seen. Uh, seen uh, like pictures of it. You 
uh, on the Internet and stuff? It's uh, worn around November 11th. Oh, um, the only thing like that I've seen was like on your property, the what you had on the uh, on um, on the on the garage. Yeah. yeah. November 11th uh, is uh, the time where all politicians and news people and everybody that appears on TV usually wear a poppy symbol, uh, lest we forget, or lest ye forget. I forget whether it's we or ye. Um, I see it online as we... The sign also on Highway 416 that comes from the U.S. border at Ogdensburg to Ottawa. So there is a link in that phraseology, the road from the U.S., the coming to Canada or the going to the United States, but I suggest it's more coming to Canada. And the poppy is linked to that. Now, if you look at a poppy closely, which I had never done because nobody ever does, you just give them two bucks and, and wear it for a day and it disappears because it's held on by a straight pin and usually falls off before the day's over. In any event, what it is, is a four-leaf clover, red in color. At the center is a black dot. I suggest to you that the black dot is Africa, and the four other continents are the four leaves of the clover. Through the black center, there is a straight pin, which is bent at a 90 degree directly underneath the clover and extends out from the center. Uh, and that pin is made of chrome. Which, which, if you know what a rod is for lightning rod or, or for grounding in the ground is concerned, um, the part that has the sharp point is the beginning. Lightning looks for something tall, skinny, and pointed. And the same would exist underground for um, a magnetic field. Charge from a magnetic field would look for a point and then go up the rod because, of course, if you're going to put a rod into the ground, you put it point down instead of point up so you can hammer it into position. But the whole thing is symbolic because it's basically saying that Africa is linked to Rome. And what is found in Africa is found by people from the four continents surrounding it. Asia, America, Europe, and Australia, I guess is what they're talking about. They loot and plunder Africa. Um, and the main beneficiary is Rome. On the other hand, because the point would be at where Rome would be, something coming from Rome is put into Africa. And I would suggest that something is genetics. And that the people of Africa 
are and have been genetically modified by having their genes structure, uh, their, their genetics modified, so that they can accomplish a specific task. That doesn't mean the entire continent has the same specific task, because anybody knows Africa and doesn't believe in maps would know Africa's the largest continent. Yeah. But genocide is well known in Africa. The kidnapping of women, young girls, for the purpose of giving birth to genetically engineered children is well known, and the reason why they always claim they can't find them. The same way as Syria provided um, genetics to Israel during the first 500 years of its existence uh, and created task-oriented tribes who would then be distributed throughout most of Europe and the rest of the four continents. Africa uh, was um, used by Arabs as a place to retrieve slaves for sale in Asia at first, and um, those genetically engineered females would obviously then give birth to babies from the um, masters they were assigned to, and that would assist the central depot in changing the genealogy and genetics of a new population. You take somebody with a specific gene orientation uh, and, and you send it to a place where it doesn't have it, it takes about 200 years for the distribution to occur. I would suggest that stories in the Bible, such as, you know, Goliath is a big guy, while David is a little guy, is not accidental. And if, uh, say, the, the uh, Japanese, who were little guys, uh, were afraid of warriors coming from the north, Manchuria and running over Japan, there would be an interest there in acquiring the genetics of uh, Goliath, which I suggest uh, is, is a pre-Ice Age version of human beings, uh, more than likely uh, from the North Sea in Russia, uh, in a place called Sitka, and the genetics of Goliath would be sent to uh, priests of, of uh, Japan who would, who would then use it to make samurais. And for a period of time, Samurais were needed to fight wars in Japan, and then in the 1800s, the reverse had to be done. They were kind of done with that need, so the um, Jesuits from Portugal took over Japan with the help of the samurai, and they basically eliminated the race, converted it to one who believed more in uh, the emperor rules and, and democracy would someday prevail in Japan. 
and by the middle 1800s, they had achieved their aim. And it, it takes about 200 years if you're going to convert an entire population. So the poppy is designed to allow uh, at least the military, if no one else knows what it's for, um, to remember that everything is genetic based and that the uh, uh, disposal of a genetic uh, tribe or group um, is called genocide. And when that occurs, it's because that particular group's task is finished and needs to be replaced by other people through a process of immigration now, because slavery is not considered to be polite. So they, uh, they use immigration, and that's why the first thing you do when you arrive in Canada, you have to go to uh, a doctor, give blood samples, urine samples, and everything, so they can determine whether or not you fit, genetically speaking, rather than task orientation speaking, as a citizen of the country in its mission going forward, not backwards and why Jennifer was uh, basically stopped at the border and told that she couldn't come in under what would have been very normal circumstances of I married somebody who lives in Canada, I'm going to live with him. And that, that would have been enough. So her genetics, as a director of nursing, doing the job that a director of nursing is supposed to do rather than what a director of nursing is ordered to do these days, such as kill people who come in and no longer fit the pattern that is required for the future. The, these people are always um, tenderized, a word I use, but it is, uh, the word they use is marinated in preparation for arrival at the hospital. They go through a series of uh, months where they get certain combos of drugs and sniffers, puffers, and stuff like that. And then when they arrive at the hospital, um, the people are given documents to sign that says, uh, do not resuscitate. Of course, I refuse to sign. They declared Tom Byberg dead. What? Four minutes after they began. And having refused to sign their document, what they did was illegal. Uh -huh. It was now practice, and it was ordered by their lawyer, who happened to be the lawyer Tom went to to get me appointed his guardian. When I refused to sign, and they killed him, wow. then the excuse they used for not giving me any death certificate or doing an autopsy is that my guardianship expired with his death. And I said to them, how can I believe that a lawyer gives me a document that makes me responsible for his health 
decisions and his property uh, at the time of uh, incapacitation, and you tell me that you can kill him in order to stop that document from having effect. Wow. So just remember when you get to be 75 that the government doesn't like paying social services for people who are no longer producing tax revenue. And the genetics you carry may not be appropriate for the coming years and months. And here I'm sure we're sitting uh, at a time just waiting day by day for uh, the loo at the Sioux. And what the government of Canada is now doing is giving preferential treatment to medical practitioners and engineers coming from developing countries. In other words, they're taking away from other countries the people who qualify for their long lives, who can fix the road problems or fix a body. However, they come from countries where government is more important than people. And they all know that if you get an order to do something from the government, you do it. And all of the doctors that are popping up at the Kempfield Hospital come from India. The um, visitor in Toronto uh, yesterday, Ottawa the day before, and Vancouver tomorrow is the Prime Minister of India. So obviously India and China and Iran are getting some kind of preferential treatment because for Iran, it's more a religious thing. It's Muslims. For India, it's more doctors. And uh, this battery is about to die on my phone here. Hang on. i got to reach the other one before it goes. If it goes, you can call me back. That's the other one at the truck. Mm -hmm. Tom did a, a job for somebody, brought it to the King of Jordan, which would suggest that the uh, Hashemite dynasty of Jordan is a major player in the game. One who just got uh, a terrorist a pilot. Thing the, yeah, the pilot, yeah. What was that all about? Okay, I got the phone. Okay. So, mm -hmm. not an accident that they're sending planes into Syria. Because until they did, Americans, Canadians, and everybody else held back on killing people in Syria. Only the president of Syria could go about killing his own people. Now they're all joining in, one task or another.
genetic engineering is the key to all existence. The key because at a time before the Ice Age came, the knowledge was there and held by certain people who qualified as scientists that at one time in the future, the only thing that could save the population of the Earth would be to leave the planet. Well, in order to leave the planet, they had to learn some new technologies that the small number of people existing at the time probably less than uh, 50 million people, was not sufficient to do all of the trial and error activity that would, have, would be required to develop a space program. Therefore, the, um, 6,000 year program was developed be implemented after the Ice Age. So 2,000 years before the Ice Age, they began to move towards underground. That would be about 26,000 BC. And the Ice Age lasted from 24,000 B.C. to 8,000 B.C., 16,000 years. Eight getting worse and, and 8,000 years getting warmer. At the stage we're at today, we are basically... 2,000 years into the development of the population required for the space age, which they determined at the time would be Caucasian. So they wrote a little story and said 200 years ago there occurred something in the Middle East called Christianity based on a guy called Jesus, which is, of course, all bullshit because all they were talking about was the creation of a gene pool based on the letter J, which can be pronounced either as an H or a Y. Pronounce it with an H. He's us. Pronounce it with a Y. Yes, us. So there are basically uh, trying to give Jennifer and I a hard time, of course, by by removing Tom and his rent that makes paying the mortgage that much more difficult. I'm sure it has something to do with it. However, the one thing they did not consider was that the word leaf, as in Leif Erikson, first guy who came to this farm, leaf is life, spelt or scrambled letters. Life after leaf. Leaf after life, the afterlife. Hmm. Tom and I made a deal, and that deal included whoever went first would notify the other one by predetermined activity. The 
predetermined activity has occurred, yet in a manner that is unclear. Communications have been received from Tom that could, in fact, be interpreted as he is dead and is helpful in the understanding of life after death, or he's not quite dead. And he wants assistance in getting him transferred away from where he is to be buried at the farm. As we had planned, um, Tom was, as all Canadians in Ontario are, the a recipient of a government grant to assist in his funeral. That amount is $1,800. That amount has not shown up in um, Tom's bank account. At the same time, the information transmitted to us by the hospital is that they refuse to give us death certificates. They say they gave it to his daughter. I've known Tom for 16 years. And I've never met daughter. Wow. A person calling themselves his daughter that sounds on the telephone like a man <laughs> called um, saying that she had received information from the coroner that her father had died. Said, uh, that's the information that I've received, but at this stage of the game, I, I had no no document to send to her or discuss with her because I don't have any, and still don't, and they still refuse to give it to me. I told them uh, last week that I had filed criminal charge uh, against the hospital administration, management, board of directors, nurses, doctors, intake people, everybody in the hospital that is associated with it because they are running a genetics operation where genocide is the central activity they perform. That their lawyer who told them that my documents expired upon Tom's death would in fact be uh, invalid because he is also the same lawyer who prepared my documents and that would be malpractice. Playing both sides. Now whether Tom was in on their activity 
decision for another day. What is not in question in my mind at this stage of the game is that life after death continues in a different manner, so to speak, and communications someone who has died can be achieved through the catmobile. That's why Egyptians brought cats into the house four or five thousand years ago. That's why the cell told me I had to start a program. They end up with a temple underground at the farm. Hundred cats would be required for a farm the size of 34.2 acres, which is exactly the size I'm told of. Central Temple Square. The nuns of Jerusalem are the blue bonneted nuns of Germany. They were there from the beginning. When Moses left Egypt, he left with the men and lived 40 years in the desert. While the women turned left and went to Israel, where from a town called Aleppo today in Syria, they were fed the means of creating a population from scratch. Two populations of Jordan, made up the priesthood, 10 population tribes, they called them at the time, made up the different gene pools for Israel, who in 586 B.C. were evicted out of Israel and established themselves around the Mediterranean These populations eventually converted from being Judeo to being Judeo-Christian. They run the world through Jordan. All secret societies come down to one important thing. The nuns in Africa of voodoo mm -hmm. knew about genetic engineering. And if they were going to create a population of women for the period after the Ice Age, they would have to cover up their breasts because male can tell when a woman is pregnant when he looks at the breast. And how can you explain women who vow chastity being pregnant? Therefore, the clothes they wore till just recently their last batches can now outdate the time given as 2062 on Christian 
calendar for the end of time, these nuns dressed the way they did because they had to hide pregnancies. Would that also explain, uh, I remember when I was on your phone, we made an observation about like flat-chested women, women who kind of created to be flat chest. They wouldn't really uh, The Rockefeller Foundation, through its um, Cancer Institute in New York and Chicago, have been studying breasts for the better part of 50 years, I guess. The purpose of studying breasts is very simple. Do you need two in a spacecraft designed for a hermaphrodite who can only have birth of one child at a time when supplied with the materials by a third party? And if the answer is you can only have one child, you don't need two breasts. Therefore, what is the best usage of the space provided in a breast? Communications. Exactly. Computing and communications for the purpose of 24-7 activity being sent up to your pod that brought you to this rock you're on after a, is it a 34 year journey. And everything you see Everything you hear, everything you speak, which normally is fed to the pineal gland, is fed to this communications equipment. Climbs up to the pod, and from there, a more powerful transmitter sends it back to us. Now, they needed many breasts, and therefore they created breast cancer. And then they got to a point where they got all the information they needed from a cancerous, tumorous breast that they wanted to make sure that the conditions they were describing uh, for the installation of technology would also work on a uh, properly functioning breast. So they needed breasts that were not cancerous. So they now con convinced uh, actresses from Hollywood based on the fear of getting cancer to have their breasts removed of course, causes a whole bunch of dingbats to follow. They now have all the breasts they need, cancerous and not cancerous. Mm. So there is that you are. <laughs> is that why they use the radiation, too? Because uh, with a lot of communication devices use radiation to transmit, right? Yeah. The radiation treatment on breasts, see the effects of it, too? Magnetic radiation as well, because magnetism, although it's good to protect us from the sun, uh, is dangerous if you live within its field. And its field is not powerful enough to hurt people, but if it is enhanced with electricity, the, the power of the magnet doubles. That's why they use it, say, on switches in cars. If you have an on-off switch, you put in a magnet so that it's 
not functioning until you send it electricity using the key. The minute you send it electricity, it doubles, acts as a magnet, pulls the switch to the on position, and your vehicle runs. Of course, if you're traveling down the highway and you cross a magnetic field, if it's negative or positive, will have a difference, it could shut off your car. And, of course, right. that's what's been happening. And they've been blaming General Motors for defective engineering because their cars shut down. It has nothing to do with defective engineering. It has to do with magnetic fields that are being boosted by the hydro company in the local area. In under our house, I have discovered indisputable proof that the house was built to kill. That there is a magnetic field below the house, which is activated by the ground um, surplus electricity sent by hydro, picked up by a rod at the pointed end brought back into the hydro box as magnetic engineering. And because it travels on much smaller wires, it's transferred to the telephone system and moves through the telephone wires throughout the house. Hmm. And the people who have lived here have died here. And the people who have lived in this house, I can be a personal guarantor, have had physical or mental depression. For me, it's physical. And it's dragged what is called hydro seal from inside my stomach down into my scrotum and pulled beyond. For women, it's depression. And depression can be shown in a number of ways. It creates fat bottom ladies in one group of women. In another group, it will create elongated breasts, like you see in National Geographic magazines mm -hmm. coming from <laughs> Africa when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, and right. mentally speaking, it depresses women during pregnancy. And children that are made are often... Mentally disabled. And I'm surrounded by mentally disabled people. Here, across the street, they had a mentally disabled boy. The woman who used to live here, the young girl who moved next door, they have a hearted. You know, different categories. He's functional, but not normal type of thing. Mm -hmm. And the deal that I made with Tom is that either one of us who died and received $1,800 from the government would give it to the owners of the farm as rent. And the other one who was alive would be able to communicate because of the catmobile presence on the farm, the electromagnetism that exists on the farm, and we would find out whether or not life exists after death. And I can guarantee you 
that in my understanding of all of this provided by the cell, and now Tom, there is life after death. And it's not the same for everybody. There are classifications and there are uh, periods of transition that exist in that life after death. I'd be more able to use the, the tools that I had when you were here to show you how you modify the expansion of the universe create a, a place in the middle where uh, four exists, three different sentencing courts exist depending upon the crime. The um, waiting period for the seven billion people that have lived on the planet before the Ice Age, since the Ice Age, but have died and were not involved in any of this conspiracy. They're all waiting there. That word in religious languages is called purgatory, purge a Tory, cleanse someone who has been misappropriated by people who use a concept of hiding within, where ruse is a Trojan horse, the symbol is the Kentucky Derby and Three races run for, what is it, three-year-olds. And that's because the number three is like two breasts. Hmm. The letter M is like two breasts, like McDonald's. All of the things that have been forced upon us, through genetic and social engineering have an effect on where we go and where we live until such time as creation moves the non-guilty to a new universe called the fifth dimension And that move is done at a period in time slated to coincide with the worst genetic engineering genocides that are underway today and are to accumulate their effect killing millions and billions of people before 2052. If somebody were to push the button on the loo at the zoo, this is the best year for them to do it. They've had uh, terrible winters in a row. Mm -hmm. they, we just finished a six-month period where the temperatures did not rise over 20 degrees. So a winter of six months is at least one or two months longer yep. than normal. Mm -hmm. More snow in the places that need to be flooded, like the Maritimes, your area. Mm -hmm. um, on the other side... Uh, um, the Mississippi River as well, you different effects of drought and storms and whatever. Everything's ready. And they're killing people in hospitals. 
They began by telling Tom he had to take prednisone in October, late October. They then gave him a series of drugs and puffers without asking permission of his guardian, which is me. They refused to give him oxygen, which he's requested for years. They tenderized him. They pickled him. They marinated him, just to use three different words that mean the same thing. And on February 18th, on our shopping trip to Walmart, as we did on every Wednesday, Tom slid down my arm to the floor on camera in the doorway of the Walmart. Tom always kept notes. He had a little book. Immediately, as he slipped to the floor and I dragged him over to the side, Walmart, right at the door of McDonald's inside the, the front entry, a woman rushed over saying she was a nurse. A manager of the store rushed over saying she was the um, security person for Walmart. Immediately, within, within a matter of 30 seconds, the manager of the store purposely took information from me by standing on my right-hand side slightly behind while the nurse kneeled down beside Tom. His little book disappeared during that period. Oh, wow. I told him to call an ambulance. A policeman walked in by himself before anything could be done. He was there. The ambulance drivers arrived. They put Tom in the ambulance, and they took him to the hospital. It was around noon. I got to the hospital after I had finished with Jennifer's stuff and um, was dropped off at the hospital while they went home, and I took a, a cab home after. I sat in the waiting room, and... At about 2 o'clock, they came and told me I could go in. I was lying on a bed in, in a kind of big room with a lot of patients. Um, under his bed, there seemed to be some kind of a platform with his clothes piled on. He was awake. He was conscious. A nurse um, walked in to check. He had a needle in his arm and a bottle beside him. A nurse walked in and said to Tom something that she could not have known unless she was in on it. She said, how did you like the prednisone? Now, he had taken prednisone on the doctor's advice in mm -hmm. October, November period. How would she know in February that he had taken prednisone, and what would it matter? Tom responded by saying, well, it gave me a high, but not like some other kinds of drugs I've had before 
it's a different kind of a high, and she giggled and said yes, and checked the bottle and walked out. Then a Hindu woman came in, said she was the doctor, she had examined the paperwork and all of that stuff, and would I sign a do not resuscitate? The guardian. And I said, no. Look at him. There's nothing wrong with him. Feed him. He doesn't want to eat these days because of the drugs he's been put on. Put something on his arm that's going to give him nutrition. He just kind of giggled and laughed and walked out of the room. Why is that funny? Tom said, Give me your pen. I gave him my pen, and he went into his pocket and withdrew the lottery ticket I had bought for him in the morning. And to me, it appeared what he was doing was signing it. He gave me back my pen. No way would... I consider him being close to death. Took a taxi. Went home. Two hours later, about 4 o'clock, 4.30, I'm not quite sure, I got a phone call from the hospital said there's been a turn for the worse. I said I have no transportation, no way of getting there until tomorrow morning. Two hours later, they called me again and said, he passed away. I said, how can that be? He was conscious and asking to sign his lottery ticket. How can he have died four hours later? I said, I want his body delivered to the farm. Can't do that. You've got to send him to a mortuary. No, mortuaries do things to people based on genetic engineering. Yep. And Tom wants to be buried at the farm. We'll call a coroner. I get a call from a coroner in Ottawa the next day saying, I'm on the way to the hospital, and I understand you have some concerns. His name was Bob Redock. <laughs> Redock. Yeah. So I said, Tom's death is not related to yesterday alone. It's a series of events that I can only explain to you if you understand the meaning of the word transubstantiation, how you can change someone without there being any outward appearance. Don't want to hear. All I want to know is yesterday. Said yesterday would not have been possible had it not been for the months leading up to yesterday. Don't want to know. calls me back later next morning and says, I want to know what your concerns are, but I want it limited to, yes, to uh, the 18th. Otherwise, I'm going to sign a document that says he doesn't need an autopsy that the information provided by the staff at the hospital is sufficient 
declare him dead by normal circumstances. He said he needs an autopsy. You don't want to do it. Dr. Roy, which I know, will gladly do it. And he wants to be buried at the farm. Well, I disagree. I said, I'm on my way into the hospital, and I'm going to go and talk to the people there. Bye. I know. This was at about 6 o'clock in the morning. At 8 o'clock, I show up at the hospital. At 9 o'clock, the staff comes in. They said, we've been given advice that your guardianship expired with his death. And you can't do that. You cannot kill somebody and then tell them that because you killed them, you changed my position. I said, I have not even seen Tom. as a dead person. I can't vouch that there's even been a death here. I haven't seen it. What I didn't tell him is Dr. Roy, sent by the cell, was with me. She went out. She's the director of administration. She went out, spoke to somebody. Then she came back and said, come with me, and led me to a room in the hospital with a sign on the front door that says more. Not like you see on TV, no no freezers, no drawers, no nothing, just a, a closet, basically, and a bed. And lying on the bed appeared to me what seemed to be a dead Tom. However, what was strange about that, and, and by the way, Dr. Roy went in in front of me and stood on the side, and coming from the cell can't be seen. And he stayed there when we left. The administrator went through the process of looking at him, and it was it was awfully strange because I, and I've talked to Jennifer about this. When a patient dies in a hospital, uh, first thing that they are told do after they've attempted resuscitation, and that involves a cart with uh, dozens of different products that can be used, means that can be used, and that the resuscitation process would probably take more than an hour. He had had four minutes, according to the that called me on the phone after I refused to do the autopsy. Had four minutes. In any event, they're told, shut the mouth before rigor mortis sets in, close the eyelids before rigor mortis sets in, move all of his clothes. I'm looking at a body that seems to have died with something under the back of his neck with the head backwards facing the wall behind him and the mouth wide open. I'm looking at a body that has a sheet over the top 
And she goes to the knees and lifts the sheet up and says, I wonder why they put his shorts back on. Wow. And she puts it down. And then I look at the feet, and he's got blue and white socks, checkered kind of socks on. Why did they put socks on his feet? And then we walk out of there, and of course Dr. Roy stays there, and we go to a room where they give me his clothes. They give me his underwear, and yet he was wearing underwear. They gave me his socks, and yet he was wearing socks. They give me the clothes that were underneath his bed that had been underneath his bed when I was in the room, I should say. And his jacket and pants smell pee and are wet. Yet his shorts are dry. And they're with his clothes. And it doesn't make any sense in a hospital setting that someone would pile clothes that had been urinated in <coughs> underneath the patient in a hospital room. And if they smelled pee and were wet, it's because somebody peed on them. Not from the inside, but from on the pile. They give me all of his things, wallet and stuff that he had on him, 200 bucks, and the ticket, the raffle ticket. I take his stuff. I go home. And I tell Jennifer. Number one, Jennifer no noted right away was the part about rigor mortis. You don't allow a patient to go through rigor mortis with his mouth open or eyes open. That's bothersome to people who will see him later on. If I say, aha, there is one reason for having the mouth open. The coroner is not coming till the next day. And one of the things he has to look for, if he's a mason, the mark of the beast. What he has to look for is a tattoo-like design on the palate of the mouth. The second thing he has to look at this person circumcised. Why? Because circumcision is where they get DNA. Mm -hmm. When he's born, they take circumcision foreskin and they put it in a jar. <coughs> in a jar. And this is a person that has a task orientation, and they need to make more of them once they find out exactly what he did during his life. Did he do what the programming required him to do? 
that would explain short sonnet. Did somebody do something? Circumcised Tom because Tom wasn't circumcised. <coughs> In the pile of stuff was a pair of white socks. Tom was in the habit, as I am when wearing winter boots, to wear two pairs of socks. Why did they take two pairs of socks on him, off of him, put one with the clothes to give to me, and put the other one back? And why did Tom have 45 different pairs of socks? Every color imaginable. Because of the Boston Red Sox and the Chicago White Sox, everybody in secret societies know that the color of your socks is how you tell people who you are on what day and what you're doing. Of course, it's only one way of doing it because you always have to have at least two ways of telling who you are in a secret society. But they needed to tell the undertaker what they had here and they put his socks back on. Because the undertaker is the one that normally does this stuff. Returns to the nuns the genetics they need for reanimation. And why Tom didn't want to go to an undertaker and want to come straight to the farm. It said... If there's any money in the bank, and when the $1,800 come in, give it to the girls to pay the taxes so that I can rent the space to be there on the farm. He had decided that $100 a year would buy him 18 years on his $1,800, and anything other that would come in would buy extra years. What he wanted was 25 years, because he said 25 years added to now would bring him to 2040. By 2040, we should have done the job of knowing exactly how afterlife functions. We should have built the temple. We should have got support for that activity. And before 2058, where... Haley's Comet returns, people would all know. So if we were lucky, 2020 would be the year that we could do something in a um, underground temple built on the farm. So whether anybody believes me or not, there will be an event that will prove to people, to any person, that there is life after death. The cell says, you don't want to be interested in believers or non-believers. If they're believers... They're, they're believing on faith alone. Mm -hmm. And faith is not what you're looking for. You're looking for facts, not faith. If they are disbelievers, it 
doesn't matter what you tell them, they'll never believe it anyways. So they're not the important ones. The important ones are the doubting Thomases, just like Tom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was those, a doubter. Those who want it to be have seen no facts to convince them that it exists, but want that information to be made available to them once it is available. Bell says, what you need to do is build a temple where the non-believers of all denominations, religious or not, can come who are doubting Thomases. And out of the ground, we will bring people who have lived there and don't believe, and yet have caused all this problem. And then we will bring people for each person that's there to recognize and know that they saw a person they thought to be dead. And then we will leave. We will leave a team of people who want to stay back on earth at the farm. We will leave with a team of people who will lead the billions of people who have lived and died and are waiting to go to the field. That's the plan. In the meantime, I got to do what I got to do to try and find out what it is that Tom took to the King of Jordan. How come it resided in a government department, more than likely health department, in Ottawa? Is it part of a larger collection of gems and and coins that are located on the farm, and what Tom was doing was confirming that fact to the King of Jordan, and prepare a grave for Tom. Inside the room, ground floor, where they had tried to kill him, screwing the door shut to the kitchen, starting a fire in the living room. At that time, there was only a window in that room. Now there's a patio door. And that was and the reason why Tom is trying to prevent this from going forward. Whether it's the tax man or those people who provide poverty assistance to the aged or Bell Canada, or the insurance industry, or a hydro, because they know they all will be charged with a form of genocide. Crime they are committing, according to the cell, is pronounced in our language, mis. M-I-S-T-R-S-I-O-N. This is how one spells that. Always a danger when it's phonetics, but that's what it sounds like to me. 
Zion at the end sounds like a prison. This prison, look it up on your computer. I'm sure you'll find a definition linked to cover up. Miss Prison. Miss Pris. Oh, Miss Prison. I see it here. The deliberate concealment of one's knowledge of a treasonable act or a felony. That's what they're guilty of. They're guilty of a treasonable act. It is genocide. And they're covering it up. Whether they are directly responsible for pushing the button is irrelevant. What role did they play that allowed this process to continue? As the cell told me once, the worst crime a human being can commit is hypocrisy. Hippo is the animal that demonstrates hypocrisy. Hippopotamus looks like a big, fat, lazy animal wallowing away in a swamp. In other words, he looks like he's just getting marinated, pickled. Mm -hmm. But should he decide to come out and chase you, you will find that he can outrun a mile runner, catch up to him, and squash him. The first Pope of Rome, Augustine, came from Hippo, town, two towns really, in North Africa. Medical professions swear a Hippocratic oath. Scientists talk about theory. Theory is the word Troy. Yeah, yeah. Troy is a Trojan horse. Hypocrite. So there we are, my friends. Enough yeah. for one day. Well, my condolences, uh, yeah. man. Was... Real sorry to hear that. I still think that Tom is going to be doing things now that he should have done while he was alive. And I will do whatever I can get him a proper hearing based on what he will do since February 18th as opposed to before February 18th. That has something to do with removing doubt. That's a valuable activity, more valuable than any of the 
crimes he may have committed during his lifetime. He used us as a cover for the fact he was wanted by the courts in British Columbia. Never told me that that was the reason he joined with us. All the time that he was with me, never accepted the possibility that there was life after death or that creation was the highest power, not the higher power, all God. I remember, yeah, we used to have that, those conversations about the afterlife, and he said he didn't, yeah. you know, he didn't believe it. He just thought he just died, and that's it. And well, now you know. Yeah, so. Or I think you know. There's uh, one problem with what I've seen. Everything I saw about Tom lying on that table that day can be artificially constructed by a medical practitioner using a chemical called Botox or a venom from a snake. A person can be made to appear to be dead. So until I have a certificate that says he died, I'm still believing he may still be alive. Sounds strange, but I need facts. <laughs> yeah. Talk to you guys again. Got to go feed the animals. All right, Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Yeah. Bye for now. All right, Glenn.